selection brushes in ZBrush 4 replace the older methods of selection in previous versions of ZBrush. And these brushes are mapped to the control and shift key of your keyboard. One improvement has been symmetrical selection. So you can see on the demo soldier, I can select one arm and the other arm will instantly be selected. Just like with the masking brushes, you have rectangular, circular, lasso, and curved stroke types for the selection brush. In this case, I have square and center turned on for my circular selection method, and it's selecting all the way through the surface. Now to deselect a surface, you simply press Ctrl and Shift and then press the Alt key. In addition, you can hold the spacebar and reposition your selection area. The lasso selection brush allows you to create freeform selections on the surface. These selections can then be turned into polygroups for further editing. New to ZBrush 4 are the clip brushes which actually allow you to cut into the surface. In this case I'm using this rectangular clipping brush to chop away parts of the surface. Now the surface is not actually deleted, rather the parts of the surface within the selection area are made to conform with the selection's shape. If I hold the Alt key, the polygons within the selection area are clipped away. Using radial symmetry, you can create interesting details for your hard surface models. In this case, I'm clipping everything outside of the box to make the ends flat. I can also combine masking methods with the clipping brushes. So for instance, I'm masking a circular area in the center here. I've turned on radial symmetry so that I can find the exact center. Now I inverted the mask. I'm switching to a side view and using the rectangular clipping brush. You can see the areas that are unmasked have been pushed in to match the area of the clipping brush. And now I'm creating another circular mask. I'm inverting the mask and then using the transpose tool in move mode to move those polygons outward. In this case, I'm creating a mask down the center. I'm blurring the mask just a little bit, and then using a clipping brush to expand that area outward. You can see how the polygons are brought outward to meet the area defined by the clipping brush. The curve stroke type can also be used with the clipping brush to precisely clip areas in the surface. And just to clean up the edges a little bit, I'm creating one more circular clip around the edges, and it brings the surface in just a little bit. Now if I turn the polyframe button on to display the wireframe, you notice that the topology of the surface has been deformed quite a bit. But this is not really a problem because I can always use a combination of remeshing and projection to create a new surface that conforms to the original surface. So here's my remesh surface. And now I can press the project all button to create a projection so that the remesh surface now perfectly matches the original surface. So when I turn on the polyframe button, you can see that now, because of the remeshing and the projection, I have a surface that will be much easier to work with when I'm using the sculpting brushes.